Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. This is episode 387. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, as always, and we've got a lot to cover today. A bunch of stuff coming. Some of it's already arrived. Some of it's already arrived. We're going to talk about PSO2, the closed beta, and the uh, new Genesis, and the way PSO2 original is being handled in this whole changeover. And then we'll wrap things up with a first look review of Causa, a new free-to-play CCG that launches in five days, but you can play in early access right now. But before we get started, let me introduce the host, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? I have also already arrived. I'm out of beta and I have fully launched. Your early access period was rather lengthy. Yeah, it like was... like 40 something years. Yeah, 40 something finally... years early <laughs> access. <laughs> finally, I've launched. Please submit a bug report if you, if you see anything else. We're not fixing anything at this point. It's too late. It's too oh, late. No, I've got, actually, to be perfectly honest, I've got a few bugs that I need taken care of with my shoulder <laughs> and everything. Yeah. Also on the line, Ms. Quinlan Bowers. What's up, Q? I already told you everything that was going on before the show. So. <laughs> yeah, so if some criminal should appear in the camera shot, we should definitely let you know. It's like a the, the call is coming from inside the house moment for you. Well, I'm upstairs and then there's a, a German shepherd downstairs. So I think I would know. Yeah, <laughs> you have just a little bit of warning. Just a little bit of warning that something was awry. All right, well, before we get to the news... You know, when we get these little packages from developers and publishers, we like to open them on the show lately. Jason had one, but was not on the show last week. So look at this willpower. He has had that box in his house for over a week now. I know. And it is not open. Say it's fragile. It is fragile. It does say fragile on it. So you shouldn't shake it. Although I noticed the box is a little crimped there on the edge, so... Also, there's even a shipping manifest here, and I haven't even looked at that, so I have no idea what this is. That is that it's, is willpower right there. It says it is from Anthony Whitehouse, uh, Backstreet Merch. So we have no and idea what company even sent this to you. I mean, it could be familiar. a box of anthrax. I mean, it. I mean, we have no <laughs> very, idea. Very fragile. It's in a glass container. That's why it's yeah. fragile. So everybody just dial nine one yeah, just, just <laughs> right, right and there. then if it happens hit one <laughs> so this is either going to be something from a free-to-play publisher or developer or it's going to be something jason ordered and totally forgot about <laughs> <laughs> that he ordered <laughs> and now it has arrived so uh, all right yeah, jason let's crack time. this open and see what this is <laughs> terra nova in chat says it's a box of bees Okay. We are, of course, doing the show live, twitch.tv slash MMO bomb. Multiple things. So we're that, interacting that with chat. All right, so it's, it's not that creepily bees. packing paper. No, yeah, it's, it's a creepy packing paper. It's a hat. Ooh, it's a hat. For what? I still do not know who this is from. What, what logo is this? What is that? Hey, <laughs> buddy. I, it's a dragon, right? Yeah, can you, can you, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's a dragon. Okay, it's a dragon hat. There's all oh, look at the look at the lid on that. Oh wait, turn it, turn it up, turn it the other way. Oh, I it, see. Okay, okay, there we go. It's RuneScape. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, the map you. had locations on the brim of the map, and I could see the okay. names of cities and stuff, but they were upside down. Oh, I see. Down. Yeah, like that. I see. Okay. So yeah, it's definitely That's it's RuneScape. That's a pretty nice hat. Logo. That is nice. Yeah, yeah. It says Glianor on the inside. Here you can see that. All right. Well, you know, I could. Although I have my own hat, but maybe I'll use another one. There is, God, there's more in here. All right, so okay, we know it's this... from RuneScape then. So from the, okay, some, uh, the team at Jagex. Package here. Very, whatever it is, is very pastel. Yeah, very soft. It's definitely not fragile. Is it, it socks? Socks. socks. <laughs> very colorful oh, socks. Yeah. In fact, they are fancy socks. You know, because That's it's right exciting. Fancy <laughs> socks. <laughs> what does it Men's say seven... under fancy socks there? Um... <laughs> equip on equip in feet slot. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Do they give a bonus to my my dexterity or anything? Yeah, I, I'm sure it's warmth, a, a plus equip one stamina. <laughs> That's great. There you go. Okay, so we got the feet and the socks and the so top to bottom. I'm covered. Yep. Uh, These are the boxers. Mask. Is, uh, I bet oh, it's, it's a mask. mask. Yeah, oh yeah, That's definitely a mask. Yeah, okay. Or or it's a G-string, one or the other. I mean, they cover the top, they cover the bottom. Now they got to cover the middle, right? Yeah, there you go. 
Okay. Q so. wants no parts of the uh, the RuneScape G string. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could wear this. Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay. What the hell would you hook it on to? Like, how pointy are your hips, brother? A <laughs> uh, pin. There's a pin. Oh, yeah, that's I got, cool. I got a cork board over there, so I'll just stick it up there. I'll, I'll attach the mask to it, maybe. I still don't see out. the fragile. Well, there's this still. This is the last thing. Okay. And uh, a, let's see. Here. It's in a box within a box. We've got box section yeah. going on. Let's see here. Oh, it is a, you know, I need a new coffee mug. I just broke one, actually. Oh, so, there you go. This, this is excellent. <laughs> Drink cup of coffee, use cup of coffee, drop cup. <laughs> Choose option. <laughs> What's it say on your Cancel. side? Cancel. Uh, uh, nothing like a nice cup of coffee. That's really cool. That is really yeah. cool. No, it wasn't I, a statue, Chad. It was a coffee mug. Yeah. And it is It is intact despite you know, the box being iffy and fragility and so forth. So. Sagra in chat is well, they jealous. Use, they use, they, 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 uh, strategically packed all the other soft items to protect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and best of all, there's no stupid mouse I don't know how to use. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The box you open, you're like, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> and I'm like, it's a mouse. It's just it's a laptop mouse. No, that is very nice. So cool to uh, thank you to the team at Jagex uh, yep. and the team behind RuneScape for your new socks. You now have plus one feet warming. Um <laughs> Obviously, we're interacting with chat. We're doing the show live, as we always do, Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash MMOBomb, where we stream multiple days during the week. Hope you'll join us and come hang out. And, of course, head on over to MMOBomb.com, follow on Twitter, subscribe on YouTube, notify, you know, notifications, tell your friends, all that stuff. Because you know what? I like having a job. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get started with the news. <laughs> All right, everybody. So, yeah, kind of an interesting week, uh, particularly yesterday. It seemed like everybody and their mother wanted to drop news on May 20th. Um, some of those things we had for like a week and a half that we couldn't post until the 20th. And then on the 20th, everybody dropped a ton of news, too. So we've got, uh, let's call this section, new updates and coming soon. Because some big games are getting some updates. Some already have uh, starting yesterday. And then some are a couple of weeks away. Jason, we're going to start with a favorite of yours and talk about Guild Wars 2 announcing that, hey, all right, time for you to catch up. You know, in a couple of months, we're going to be trying to sell you an expansion and uh, we really like you to be playing the game and be caught up. So all the season two content is about to go free so that you can catch up on all that juicy lore from season two. This will happen, what, next week, I think? Starting next week, and it'll actually go, uh, including season three as well, eventually. Oh, wow. So at, at least that, I would guess it'll probably go beyond that, but they've only announced two and three so far. We're up to five at the moment, in case you're kept keeping track. <laughs> For those of you keeping score. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. happens on Tuesday, so May yep. 25th, Tuesday. You'll get two episodes of season two of The Living World per week for free. Mm -hmm. Eight episodes, so you'll have that run four weeks, and then for season three and everything going forward, which means it pretty nicely maps out into the expansion announcement a couple of weeks from now, and then presumably an expansion launch uh, sometime later this year. You know, if I was smart, I would have actually figured out, like, okay, if we have, like, two episodes of everything and it's every two weeks, how about, is it two weeks the first one? or uh, Yeah, two episodes uh, per week. Per week, okay. So I could probably, right. well, no, that probably wouldn't so, be enough time. So from May twenty fifth to you know June twenty fourth, twenty fifth ish, that would be season two. To the end of July would be season three. Are there eight episodes right. in every season? Uh, there weren't in season three. I think. I think there were only six. So okay, might so be that one would per be week. So three weeks or two per week. A, basically, you probably could do some math to figure out when the expansion is going to launch. If you wanted to really go beyond that, the announcement is on July twenty seventh, and then the launch is however long after that. But Right. Yeah, well, the, so season two would end at the end of June. Season three would end in mid July to late ish July because there would be uh -huh. three weeks instead of four. So then you'd have mid to late August for the end of season five to mid to late September or four to the mid to late Early September, mid September. I'd say probably for yeah. the end of season 
five. Yeah, five would yeah. be in like mid September ish. And I think that I think that kind of jives right, doesn't it? That does just about. I mean, they might give it like an extra two weeks or so beyond that, so whatever. But yeah, I, I think they're probably going to go that route. They did something like this before. I'm not. I don't think it was before the last expansion, but maybe it was. But they have done this before, where they've given away older episodes for free. Because normally, you log if you log in at any time during the uh, when that stuff is active, you get it for free. Otherwise, you have to pay like two hundred gems. Right. The gems were to get it later. The season two stuff came out in twenty fourteen. So. If you if you weren't playing back then, you have to pay for this, but now I'd be able to get it for free to go through it all. I kind of like this approach, Q. Like I, you know, I understand you got to make your money, right? And the the base game is free. They sell the expansions. They they sell the DLC, and then of course there's the gem shop, which I guess we could get into in a whole other time because that's a mixed bag depending on who you talk to when it uh, comes to Guild Wars Two on whether they have a very good cash shop or an annoying cash shop. Uh, so we could talk about that sometime. But I, I do kind of like this approach of, you know what? Let's give away the stuff for free for periods as promotional. It's just smart advertising. Yeah, and it just gets anybody who was a latecomer or anything like that, you know, it, it, it gets those people in there to get caught up before the next round comes out. So, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's just it's just smart it, it's smart marketing, and otherwise, it's just sitting there, and they're not making any money off of it anyway because nobody's buying it. Yeah, so. use it to to get those people like me that have played before and haven't played in a while to come on back. Let me ask you this, Jason: though, is not being somebody infinitely familiar with Guild Wars uh, twos and their payment models and stuff for any of the season? Is the season content like totally independent of the expansions, or even though they're giving you seasons for free? you might hit points where you have to purchase an expansion that you haven't bought before. I mean, it's like having, uh, it's like there'll be gaps in your story knowledge, obviously, if you skip the expansions. But you wouldn't need the expansions to play the season stuff. No, no, you wouldn't okay, need that. That's what I was asking. Like, are they totally independent as far as price tag is what I Sure, I sure. But it'd be like watching, you know, three seasons of a TV show, then skip a season four, and then watching season five, you know. Right, right, like, right. Yeah, you you're going to miss it, but... interim stuff, but okay. Sure. Look, with some TV shows, that is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time I put The Office on, like over here, they, season one's never on. It's just, nope, skip. <laughs> I, I just skip, I skip all seasons of The Office. Oh, That's... Such a curmudgeon. Such a curmudgeon. I haven't actually watched. You're talking about to The American Office, right? Uh, either yeah, or. Because we're Americans. Either or. No, I love them both. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Gervais yeah. in, in uh, BBC's office is tremendous. I just always avoid American versions of British shows. <laughs> 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 so. <laughs> so that one's coming. That's next Tuesday. But yesterday, Magic Legends went live with their latest update, uh, as well as a dev blog, as well as some tips on deck building. So if you are interested in building your deck or you're having a little trouble or you just want some basic strategy, we've got a piece over on MMOBomb.com that lays out from the team... Uh, some deck building strategy. So you might want to take a look at that. It's like two or three pages of some nice strategy and good ideas. Uh, so yeah, nice feedback if you're having a little bit of problem building decks. But as far as the update itself, obviously the big part of this update, the Pyromancer class has been added. Troy Blackburn, the noob fridge himself, streamed this yesterday on our live stream uh, on uh, Twitch and was playing through some Magic Legends as well. And then in addition to this update and some of the other content, which we'll get to in just a second, Jason, we got a ton of like small information, including changes to the way they're doing booster packs as far as the distribution of items in them, and then advertising right on the shop page the distribution of items in those booster packs after these changes are implemented. A lot of interesting stuff from the dev team yesterday. Yeah, yeah, they're finally they're taking the Demir Assassin out of the packs, oh, uh, replacing, yes. <laughs> replacing it with a like grand prize bonus of ten spells. I guess it's like if you get that lucky, you just get some sort of super pack that has a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, you can also get that by upgrading the Mystical Study, so you know it's not just a cash shop thing. Just like the, they finally did with the Demir Assassin. Uh, changes to the battle pass, you know, new classes, the the new class, the costumes, spell unlocks. 
cool thing about Pyromancer is it's actually free. What is it? It's free for the first uh... for the first four days. Yeah. Yeah, free for the first four days. Otherwise, you'll have to get to like level 30 or something or whatever to get it. So it's a little harder, but not ridiculously tough. But yeah, I mean, you hate to say that. Yeah, yeah. They're, you know, we, we joke about how they're not really in beta because they, they have all this stuff and they've launched and they're not doing wipes or any, anything. But this is a lot of stuff that's like, oh, we screwed up the initial reveal. So we got to change all this stuff. It, it does have a very beta feel to it. But it's also the sort of thing that you think, couldn't they have? Wouldn't they have known this before they they put it out there to a wider audience? Wouldn't that have been better? Because I think I feel like this game has really gotten shit on. It's kind of deserves it to some degree. It's not a terrible game, but they just should have done better with their initial reveal of it. Like they're not they're not going to get a second chance to make a first impression with a lot of people. I think right. And you know, if you need proof, go see Crucible. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, yeah, I saw a thing last the last night or this morning. Someone said one year ago today it launched. Oh. So I think that was like yesterday or one year ago. Sad face. Q, it is it is a little bit mystifying, right? I mean, this is Cryptic Studios, which, okay, you may not like some of the things they do with monetization in the perfect world portfolio. And it just let's set that aside uh, just for a second because I want to talk about the games themselves. Generally speaking, um, they have a, a, a an okay bar of quality. They do have a little bit of a track record for maybe not jumping on bugs as fast as possible or as fast as the community would like them to. And in some cases, like Neverwinter in particular, still suffers from some long-running bugs. So that could be a little frustrating. But you had a, let's say, a competent to better-than-competent studio. You had a mega IP in in Magic the Gathering. Uh, You had a a new mechanic that actually I felt worked better than I thought it was going to work with the random spells. And that may be a turnoff for some, but I actually was okay with it after messing with it. But it just feels like magic, uh, magic legends really, really hasn't grabbed the, the audience that I think they were trying to grab yet. And hopefully they'll get there because I do like some of the things the game does Hey, getting this new class for free, if you claim it by May 24th from the Zen shop, that's cool. Making these types of changes, talking about uh, we're still discussing the adjustments to currency caps and because that is a huge topic. And then things to do at Endgame to flesh that out and make it a better experience. Console release is well in development, according to uh, the, the dev blog including some members of the team playing exclusively on test kits for the consoles right now to, to optimize it. Like, we're moving right along here, but I almost wonder if Jason's right. Like, should this have stayed in a closed beta fashion to do all of this and then make that early access open beta first impression even better than the way it was kind of handled where I think maybe they've maybe they've shot themselves in the leg a little bit? Um, I mean, I, I've dabbled it in a, a little bit because I am kind of, I think, the audience for it. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna go and read the tutorials on how to 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 deal with the decks and stuff. I'll just figure it out on my own, right? Just by fiddling with it or whatever. But um, I kind of wonder if it's it maybe just not like. I don't know, a sign of the times or something, because they're obviously not the first company to do this kind of thing where they launch the game in an open beta kind of situation and continue to do beta stuff or actually handle it as if it's a beta instead of, and and change a lot of things, right? Like we've seen companies do that. They launch the game, it's a certain way, everybody's playing it. And then by the three, four months down the road, it is a completely different game. So I don't know. If it's maybe just like something game companies are doing now and it's or maybe they see other game companies doing it and they're like, all right, that seems like a thing to do, even though it doesn't necessarily go well for the other companies either. <laughs> like, I, I'm not sure where the logic lies in it. And it's like, I mean, yeah, I play cryptic games, right? Like I play Star Trek online and stuff, and I generally don't have, you know, a problem with like. 99% of, you know, whatever they do, I go and I play the game and it's a good time and 
I, I don't worry about the current, the cash shop stuff as much. I mean, <laughs> I know it bothers you guys way more than it bothers me to have the thing pop up in the middle. I just ignore it. <laughs> but, oh, I hate that. Yeah, I absolutely hate that. I just, I think I started ignoring it around the same time I started ignoring like like just that kind of stuff in general when ion would pop up the thing telling me to go outside and play <laughs> like, <laughs> do you remember that i do <laughs> i i yeah. would be like you've Take been breaks. here for a while you need to go somewhere else just like i think it kind of falls into that area for me where i i just don't even notice it anymore <laughs> but um yeah i i i almost think it's just like kind of a, a little bit of a gaming trend because they were definitely not the first company to have done this no and and it all. always not does all. seem weird when they do it because you're just like should they have done all of that behind the background but at the same time you have people yelling transparency we want transparency about everything they're doing so it's like well here's your transparency you get to see that developing games is a shit show no. the people behind the scenes are yelling we need money now so watch <laughs> Right. That that takes, <laughs> but gamers gamers do want that trend, and and what you see when you finally get it is that all that game development is a complete shit show, <laughs> and, and that we're lucky any game actually makes it out. It's uh, <laughs> giving it too much credit, but whatever. Trend, Trendshot had this to say on the piece on uh, that we put up on MMO Bomb. Uh, not sure the game really benefits from adding another planeswalker. Talking about the pyromancer. Would much rather see new content, story, or different styles of play added. I bought the Battle Pass, but refuse to spend more money on things that can be purchased with in-game currency. The game hasn't really proven to me that it has the staying power with the likes of Path of Exile 2 and Lost Ark on the horizon. I hope that I'm wrong, and I look forward to further development of the game. And that is a concern we've brought up on this show, Jason, is that you're moving into the ARPG market, which already has Path of Exile kind of dominating on the free-to-play side, kind of has Diablo uh, dominating on the buy-to-play side, Torchlight somewhere in the middle, depending on which Torchlight you're talking about, one, two, or three, and then Path of Exile 2, and pr presumably, maybe, Lost Ark coming west through a publishing deal with Amazon Games, maybe, if that company can hold it together. For just a little while longer, guys. Just a little while longer. This is a tough space. And yeah, the, the deck mechanic might be unique and interesting to some people. But does the game have the content there? And when you're going up against Path of Exile in particular, damn, you lose on content until you're at least a 10-year-old game at this point. Because they are just so far ahead on the amount of things that you have to do. You know, it's a side note. I, I watched a uh, Faye streaming a uh, Diablo three last night. Yeah, and my God, that game is ugly compared to Path of Exile. Oh my God, it's just it's hideous. I'm sorry, because <laughs> 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 I've been watching. Because I've, I've been covering the Path of Exile stuff and watching their streams and doing their stuff, whatever, for so long. I hadn't seen Diablo three in years, and I watched it last night. And I'm like. Is this like an Atari 2600 game? My God. Oh, it's not it's that bad. <laughs> okay, it's not that bad, but still. Being a little a harsh. PS2 game or something, but anyway. Um, <laughs> the thing that I think about Magic Legends, though, is it's like, it's kind of the game nobody wanted. Like, when they first announced it, they said, My Magic MORPG, everyone's, everyone's, of course, thinking, you know, third-person game where you go and do yeah. quests and you go around in a world and whatever. They backed, they backed away from that. They specifically said during my demo, yeah, we backed away from that. We're just calling it an ARPG now. Yeah. They, they sowed that seed. They got that first impression. And probably even with, even still, like 98% of people still thought it was MORPG up until the launch. And they're like, what is, what's, this, what's this Path of Exile or Diablo clone thing? I don't understand this. They said it was an RPG. I don't get it. So it just it's, a, it's not what people wanted, I think, for the most part. But it's what they decided to make. And good luck with that. Yeah, it's definitely, I still think, personally, my opinion is, I still think it's worth watching. If you like ARPGs at all, uh, I, like Q, like you're, you're not heavily invested in the Magic franchise uh, and its characters and all that stuff, but you enjoy ARPGs, you enjoy Path of Exile, you enjoy that, uh, the original Torchlights 1 and 2, uh, you like that type of stuff. I still think it's worth watching and keeping an eye on, but I just... I kind of agree that I don't, you know, Pyromancer is cool, but let's get some shit to do in the game because there's a lot of empty space in there right now. A lot of empty space. 
Hopefully it'll come in time. I'm still going to keep an eye on it. That's live now. Go get your free Pyromancer. You have until the 24th to do it. Also live now is Dauntless's latest update. And we teased this one a little while ago where we've got a new behemoth, the Chronovore, residing in the first new hunting grounds being added to the game since that was implemented last December, Paradox Breaks. Uh, and Jason, you got a chance to sit down, as always, check this out with the team, and uh, yeah, you got your ass kicked. Pretty much. <laughs> well, that's simply how it is we don't it. Although I will say, you have to fight two uh, behemoths before you get to the Chronovore. We actually did pretty well against those. Like the first one, I want to say, I want, I, I got to brag about this. The first one, I was the only member of our three-person team who did not get downed. There you go. I'm on there with one, with uh, one of the developers and with their, with Andy Burt, their marketing guy, and I was the only one who didn't get knocked down. But so, in the first fight, I carried, clearly. Nice. After but, that, I got my. But ass not kicked. so much when you got to the <laughs> Chronovore. Yeah, well, it's the, what they call a signature behemoth, which is like their big, big, big boss, a raid boss kind of thing. And they always do those at the end of an escalation, which is how they've been introducing signature behemoths before. This, you have this like five, five uh, battle, you know, battle whatever against different uh, behemoths with a signature one at the end. This one though is not a is not a, at the end of a uh, at the end of a, an escalation. It's got it's more like an open world, like the hunting grounds that they've been doing with other stuff. But you do have to go to like an arena in the middle. You have to kill enough behemoths around it to get the stuff that you need to summon it and so forth. So then you can fight it and get your ass kicked just like me. Yeah. So uh, from your preview, it says, you know, the, the, the boss looks like a kind of like a big ass manta ray. Uh, yeah. Well, teleports, very long tail. Moves pretty quickly. has some like bullet hell dodging type stuff. But this is my favorite part Lasers. of your piece. Yeah. My favorite part of your piece is. If you get close or moderately close, you might be subjected to its whip-like tail, which, I'm told, uses the sound of an actual whip. As marketing director Andy Burt told me, someone in their Slack chat one day asked without any context, hey, does anyone have a whip? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he said it, yeah. <laughs> so maybe the lighter side of gaming development there, Q. <laughs> we just talked about the maybe darker side a little bit, but the little lighter side right. of who is asking for a whip and why? Hopefully not a senior manager. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> see, I guess it all depends on the company. Like, if you see that in Ubisoft Slack chat, ooh. Uh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Is that too soon? No. Uh, New report, by the way, on that one uh, just broke today that, yeah, hey, nothing happened. I bet you're stunned. Hmm. French reports find nothing, nothing changed after all those reports. Anyway, um, the, so the, the Echoes of the Future, this update also is what? Like the second anniversary of the console launch. Mm -hmm. So the con so doing we've awesome. had a lot of those this week, Q. Like the console anniversary, like this one, what was the other yeah. one? Skyforge? Oh, was it Skyforge? Skyforge it, doesn't have the mechanoid invasion to celebrate the console's anniversary or something. I don't know. We've had a lot of console Oh, I think that might be. I think there's. Yeah, there's been because uh, there there might have been three or four at this point actually. But yeah, there's there's a lot of okay. It it officially launched on PC like you know months or years or whatever before, but we're just celebrating the console. Actually, there was um. There was drama over one of the games where they did, they introduced a bunny version. Oh, it was for um, Honokai Impact. They introduced a bunny oh, version yeah, yeah, of the yeah. character and everybody got very upset about it because it was disrespecting the character or something, but it was very specific for the console version, mm -hmm. the console anniversary of the game. And, then they, and it wasn't even that she was a bunny in the game. Like it was just like side content, but everybody, it was a huge drama for the anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah. Last uh, little tidbit here. This is coming soon, but you know, sometime. Uh, we did see leaks this week of the Division Heartland uh, details. We kind of speculated on what type of game this might be when it enters free to play. Uh, and uh, turns out that. Um, yeah, lead game designer Taylor Epperly was giving testers information on what to expect. 
explaining the NDA and everything, and apparently one person just didn't care <laughs> about that whole NDA portion. So yeah. released some video of information and the entire conversation that was given to all the potential testers. So we have a little bit more of an idea, Jason, on exactly what type of game we're dealing with here. Yep, it's going to have a couple different modes. Uh, it's going to take place in this small Midwestern town called Silver Creek, or a small town American city called Silver Creek, Midwest or wherever. Uh, and there's going to be a mysterious story revealed through a co-op PvE mode called Expedition. And then you can play in a 45-player PvE VP mode called Storm. Okay, that sounds a, that one sounds a lot like Scavengers or the Cycle to me. Yeah, it does. Because it says we'll be doing scavenging, exploring, looting, fighting, and surviving, all while avoiding the most aggressive and unpredictable virus contamination the division has ever seen. <laughs> so, I'm, I hear about an aggressive, unpredictable virus contamination. I think of the circle closing in around you during a battle royale. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I was like, so now we're just the making the just circle like out of anything, like poison and ice and clouds yeah. and virus. Now, so sure, just it's going to be a swarm of bees soon. <laughs> Uh, Fire infected bees, yeah. This for Terra game, Nova, yeah. battle royale where the storm closing in is just walls of bees. <laughs> so you guys are seeing chat still? Apparently, I'm not. Uh, I seen no, I see chat. I mean, nobody's okay. saying anything at this exact. Oh, well, second. say something, chat. Damn it. Oh, they they can say. Something. Yeah, the the last thing I have is very nice. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Good. Yeah, 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 oh, so you're saying the comments on the site. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 See Terra okay. Nova. They're not the bees. The wall of bees. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you guys got to continue to talk or Jason just thinks his computer freezes. I just kind of zone out. Just like... uh, so so how, do we, how do we break this down, Q? Were we right or were we wrong? Like, I feel like we were wrong on the co-op PVE mode, like the expedition thing. But I feel like we were right that there is an element of battle royale to this in the prediction. So I, I don't know. Like, do we get half credit or is it, you know, an all or nothing thing here? Isn't this Jason's area to, to determine how the these points pull out? Um, Jason's like, the resident scorekeeper. I don't even remember this conversation, um, which shows just how invested I am in the division. I love the division as a as a concept, and I enjoyed I think... Division One and Two, but not at their launches, respectively. And Warlords of New York has kind of made some mistakes that I don't like personally, but. I like the division, but I don't know if I'm going to enjoy this because it seems like, again, you're, yes. you're taking from two or three different games and just putting it in the division universe, and maybe that'll work for me, but it's not something I'm super excited about. I do enjoy the whole thing. All right, so we're going to take, we're just going to take this game mode from over here and this game mode from over here, thing that games do, that is particularly shooters do now but yeah i do think that like everybody else they've basically gotten themselves some sort of battle royale mode um and although it's okay no yeah the pve pv maybe they are fighting bees maybe that's what the <laughs> e is <laughs> PvP PvE PvP VB PvP VB <laughs> VEE -E. <laughs> -E -E. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it does sound like particularly that one mode sounds a lot like scavengers to me and I'm not the only one there's comments on the article on mmobomb.com that say the scavengers 2 already uh I guess that that primary expedition mode is the one that's going to have to differentiate the game from some other things we'll see but apparently some people just don't care about NDA at all and immediately throw footage on the internet. Mm. <sighs> Come on, gang. Come on, play nice. Play nice. Uh, moving on, we've got Fantasy Star Online 2. New Genesis had its closed beta last week. Uh, that is... I turned Q's camera off in the shot. I meant to... <laughs> I meant to switch the B-roll, and I turned Q's camera off. And he put up the wrong B-roll. No, because I never shut off. I went into the preview editor to shut off there the B-roll and then went live on that scene, but I hadn't shut off the B-roll. I shut off Q's camera. 
Yeah, never mind. It's been a long time since Q had camera issues. It hasn't been green for a long time. Oh, man. We're on real that. internet. <laughs> no, we're on real internet as opposed oh, okay. to trying to use hotspots. We... Oh, that's right. Our, our internet provider is actually our electric company. Hmm. Uh, so Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis just wrapped up a global closed beta weekend this past weekend on Monday morning. I posted a gameplay action video on YouTube. You can check that out on YouTube or on MMO Bomb. Uh, about 10, 15 minutes, not like an in-depth first look or anything, just giving you some basic information and impressions so you can tell if you want to check out the game. Later this month, we're supposed to get the, I mean, it is the 21st, but later this month, we're supposed to get the benchmark and the character creator for a launch in June. We don't have any more particulars as of this recording than June. So next month sometime. What we did get uh, was a few days to check out New Genesis. And I got to say, as a Fantasy Star Online 2 fan, obviously I was already looking forward to this to the point that I just kind of stopped playing PSO2 because there really wasn't a reason. I had all the cosmetics that I really, really, really wanted. Uh, so I was good, you know, I didn't need to do any more. The combat feels a lot better, a lot better, a, a lot faster. The open world environment is very, very cool for me as a PSO2 fan and as a PSO fan uh, to play in because historically this has always been an instanced, you know, based game. You're going from the ship to an area back and back, back and forth through the entire thing. It was nice watching this play out in a whole open world. Granted, this was a very limited closed beta. We didn't have a ton of time in there. It was like two days when it was all said and done. Uh, I do have like questions about how big the world actually is, You know how much there is actually to do out in there once you've finished things like primary stories and available side quests. Like, Are there going to be times where we're sitting there kind of like just farming urgent quests and, and, uh, and trials throughout the map, and, and that's kind of it? I don't know. We'll have to see. So I do have, like, some concerns. But the game looks great. Not top-end, but certainly better than an 8-year-old PSO2. Uh, the combat feels good. The movement feels really, really good. Uh, that is what Fantasy Star should have always been. I granted technical limitations back in the day, but finally, this is where it's at. On the downside, if you don't like menus, this basically has the same menu system as PSO2. It is heavily menu-driven still. Uh, yes, the UI is prettied up a little bit. Yes, there's still some more changes I would like to it if I was doing it. But there are a lot of menus, a lot of sub-menus. Uh, some of them are they're still there. They're just hidden a little differently than they were in PSO2 to make you feel like maybe there aren't as many menus. <laughs> And a lot of the gameplay core mechanics are the same. You're going to be farming up gear, upgrading that gear, going it out and trying to get uh, higher targets down so that you can get a RNG chance at better gear. I mean, it is Fantasy Star Online in a nutshell. But the open world action combat and the, the changes they've made to it, the multiple different aiming modes, they're all there. If you're familiar with PSO2 and you like it, my guess is you're going to be like me and you're going to love New Genesis. If you didn't like PSO2 because of menus, that's not solved. If you didn't like it because of instance-based, maybe New Genesis does solve that for you. So it's kind of a check out the gameplay action video. I talk more about that stuff in there. I left with good impressions. I left with good impressions. Jason has the gameplay action video and seeing, you know, somebody take, take the reins a little bit in, in not advertised uh, or sponsored videos. Has it changed your mind on the new Genesis at all? Or are you still just, eh, whatever? What if you didn't like it because it was on the Microsoft store? That you'll be fine with. I mean, the beta you wouldn't have been fine with because that was exclusive to the Microsoft store. But uh, it is going to launch on Xbox and Microsoft store. And then the post says, and any other platforms that we have PSO2 on will eventually launch new Genesis there as well. Eventually. Okay. So we don't have launch, dates for any of it. So I don't know if anything's like all oh, day sure. one or what. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, looking at it, kind of looks so much better. Yeah, <laughs> like that, that. That's basically what I got from it. Yeah, you you talk about how you can do this thing different, that thing different. But you know, I never got that far in it. I was just only vaguely interested in it, just from the standpoint of it being an older game with older mechanics in the first place. But if it looks better and it actually plays, if it actually isn't on the Microsoft Store, then it's something I'll. Get. And there isn't a new new Genesis coming out in a year. <laughs> 
God, why did they do that? It's just DSO two new ever. new Genesis. PSO three or something. No, no, it's probably my, you know, it's, if it's on a Valve platform, they can't have a three. Uh, but yeah, womp, womp. I mean, I'll, I'll look into it. I have I'll look into this with the same notion that I was that I was looking into the they're going to look into it originally. Like, yeah, kind of neat. I'll have to give it a shot, see if it's anything interesting. But I I doubt it's going to be like you know my huge game that I play for hours and hours. But the fact that it looks like a game that actually came out in the last couple of years is going to help. Q, what about your opinion here? You as somebody that dabbled in Fantasy Star Online too. I mean, I'll definitely check, get in and check it out and play it because it is the kind of game I like. The biggest problem that I had with PSO2 was that they were just rolling everything out so much. Even though I was doing repetitive stuff, right, they were rolling all the other stuff out so much that it was really just overwhelming because they were trying to do all that catch up. And then, of course, they announced New Genesis, and I was like, I'm not going to stress myself out trying to get caught up on this. Just go play New Genesis anyway. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I'm just not doing that to myself. But I feel like, especially with me playing Genshin Impact and, and other stuff, it's going to be like a kind of just a side thing that I hop into instead of, you know, like a job game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the beta. I enjoyed the beta. I'm looking forward to... I wouldn't spend 15 hours in character creation, but <laughs> maybe some of you will. There are, again, I play this in fast forward in the video, but there's a ton of different options and sliders and stuff. But, but did, did you show off the fingers? <laughs> the fingers are in view. The fingers are in okay. view. Uh, so that whole like character creation <laughs> video portion that you did it just kind of bugged the crap out of me because you had it on high speed and everything was so twitchy and I was just like yeah ah. well so I fast forward it it's only like 15 <laughs> seconds because I didn't want to it's not a first look but yeah I didn't realize until uh I was watching the video before I rendered it and I was like yeah there's really no way I can fix that I mean that's just gonna what that because your character in real time does a slight bob like this. <laughs> and it's just like... <laughs> and so when you put it in fast forward to speed the footage up just to show the menus fly by real quick, it goes... <laughs> well, but it's like, like this the weird vibration. Are, yeah. Everything, yeah. everything independently, yeah. right? It's, it's like... kind of awesome, actually. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, what this does mean, though, is we've always kind of asked, like, what does this mean for PSO2? Like, we know the game is still going to stay live. We know the two are going to be linked. You can jump back and forth. We know a lot of cosmetics are going to go from PSO2 to be able to be used in PSO2 New Genesis and vice versa. But as far as the longevity of the original PSO2, that we really don't know. Uh, we don't know, is this going to be you know gone in a year? Is it going to stay there forever and just never receive updates? Like, will there be an episode seven? Uh, and I have speculated that probably not. No. Uh, I can't see them really realistically adding content to PSO2 at this point. Yesterday, uh, you can check out this full list on MMO Bomb. We've got the, the, the piece queue put it up. We did get some information about some things that are going to change in PSO2 now that New Genesis is uh, coming. So at the launch, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but there are a couple key ones I want to hit for you. At the launch of New Genesis in PSO2, the Fresh Find Shop is going away. It's going to be replaced by the Treasure Shop, uh, but that's going to work in a slightly different way. So Fresh Finds is no longer going to be a thing. Uh, the, refer the login bonuses, they're going to stop. New login bonuses will only be available in New Genesis. So, yeah, that's going away. The Friends uh, Referral program that's going away the feature for returning players is going away here's one that i think might be a little more telling than anything though the pso2 scheduled urgent quests right now they work on a schedule yes there are spontaneous ones too but they work on a schedule you can go to the site and see you know what they're going to be for the next x weeks upon the launch of new genesis there will be no more scheduled urgent quests in PSO2. Urgent quests will only occur spontaneously. The urgent quest Twisted with Hatred, which right now is only available as a scheduled urgent quest, will be changed to occur spontaneously too. 
There will not be advanced notice provided for PSO2 New Genesis urgent quests outside of special occasions. So we're not going to get an urgent schedule, urgent quest schedule in PSO2 New Genesis either, with the exception of events. But that, I think, is kind of a little telling to me that we're not going to schedule events, the, the, the urgent quests anymore. Urgent quests are a pretty key feature of PSO2, particularly when you're grinding out certain uh, currencies to obtain certain weapons. Uh, so not having a schedule on that anymore, Jason, and just letting them occur spontaneously, uh, that kind of that kind of impacts, like, well, now I if I want to farm up a particular currency, I really just have to get lucky. You know, it's not like take a look at when that those urgent quests are going to be running and make sure you farm them as much as you can. That's a pretty big change, I think. Why did they release PSO2? <laughs> it just all goes back to that. We knew they were going to just, it's going to be cast aside That just in a year later. It's like, why? What are they thinking? Yeah. PSO2 Day does get some buffs, though, Q. I guess that's good. Maybe. I'm, I'm sorry. My brain, like, <laughs> trying to remember what that was that they were getting. Oh, um, well, yeah, some of the reward items are being increased, yeah. basically. Like, it's not it's not that they're doing anything special, additionally special for it. They're just, and they're increasing some items in in other things as well, right? So, like, yeah. the, for rewards and stuff like that, certain things will just be increased. Um, I don't know if that's to actually benefit the regular PSO2 players or the new Genesis players who are wanting to do stuff in PSO2 to get things for new Genesis. <laughs> like, so it's just, but I yeah, as far as all the other stuff, as far as all the other stuff, I mean, they're even taking away what the, the ARCs badges. Yeah. Uh, not all of them. I think just the, what the blue white, and white, what, blue and white. Yeah. 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 Blue and yeah. white. You can still use them if you have them, but once right, but you won't you're be able done to with them, them, they're, so, so you're here. Go ahead. Go Jason. ahead. Go ahead. You, I, I'm, I'm just going to pose the question then. Like, is PSO2 long for this world? I, I know the architecture links the two games and you can bounce back and forth and all that. And maybe at that point, there is no real reason to shut it down. Just, you know, if it's part of the existing architecture for New Genesis anyway. Uh, yeah, you just don't spend any money or development time on it besides maybe an occasional event here and there throughout the calendar year which they did give a little list of, of some of those. Uh, so is this six months, one year, and gone? Is it just let it sit there and, hey, if you want to go farm cosmetics in it, fine. Go farm cosmetics in it. Go level up. Go get new classes and stuff. Uh, or is this something that is going to be gone uh, within a year? Like, I don't know the long-term play here. I'm not really sure. I think it just sits there, and they just don't do anything with it, really. I mean, there's, like I said, there's probably no reason not to. I doubt that it you know, garners any significant expense to keep it up, so might as well. I'd be one of those things that they let it sit there until they've decided that enough people, like everybody who wants to go and farm whatever has done it, and now they're just playing New Genesis, and then they go ahead and, you know, call it to use this whatever servers it's sitting on for other things. And, and they do it, have the data to kind of make this decision, right? Because Episode 6 launched in Japan forever ago. And that hasn't received any new content uh, on the like the main story or a new episode since the conclusion of the episode six series. So they already have the data of the, this is how long these people have played without adding content. So and here's how many people have played without adding content. So maybe it can just sit there forever. Uh, I don't know. I think of course, it's weird. In, of course, the for the Japanese players, right? They didn't have anything else. Right, 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 right. Like, there was nothing have to migrate Genesis. away to. Yeah. Right. So that if they if they wanted to continue to play anything PSO2, that's what they had to play. But I'm kind of wondering, as far as the launching it in the West thing and running through all the content really fast, only to give us new Genesis. I wonder if it was literally just like some kind of marketing thing for them to like just build a player base for new Genesis, which they knew was going to be coming out. And have it sitting there 
just, you know, and even if you've only played a little bit of PSO2, if you're interested in it at all, you're going to hop over to New Genesis, even if you drop doing PSO2 to do New Genesis, but it's still... Oh, I'm sure that's a tactic Jason Winter loves, right? That sounds exactly like something still, you'd be in favor of. <laughs> but, I mean, doesn't it make a little bit of sense? It does. Rather than, yeah, it, I mean, it so, does, but it also doesn't. Like, it, it's a little aggravating on my side. We'll get to that when we get to the bombs. All right, before we get to the bombs, let's finish up. I want your opinions on Causa. I talked a little bit about this last week. I did the first look video. It's up on the site and on YouTube. You can check it out. If you like CCGs, I'm going to boil it down to this one is definitely worth checking out. If you don't like CCGs, check out. Don't go watch the first look. You're, you're, you're fine. I mean, we'll go give it a like. Do a personal favor to me. But uh, if you don't like CCGs, you can skip it. If you even remotely like CCGs a little bit, I think this is familiar enough. I think the way I phrased it in the first look was familiar enough that you'll pick it up very quickly, but has some unique elements that you'll be able to make the decision also very quickly if you enjoy some of the mechanics. I am very much enjoying Kaza, but I have concerns about long-term balance. The game doesn't officially come out until this coming week on the 26th, uh, but you can play it for free right now on Steam. Uh, I'll let my first look stand alone, and I did talk about this a little last week, so I won't belabor my points to say it's definitely worth checking out, and I do give this one a thumbs up. I'm a huge fan of it. It is my favorite CCG that I've done a first look on in probably the last two years. Will I be playing it a year from now? I don't know. I do have pretty severe balance concerns, particularly against mill decks in, in this game. Jason, what do you think? Uh, it definitely looked nice. I, I've certainly you know, reviewed or looked at some CCGs that looked like they were cobbled together in about two weeks. So this one definitely has very nice art. I like how the things are even a little animated, like the characters or whatever. Yeah. Um, in terms of the mechanics, I was a little, I was a little confused now. Okay, so. When you when you send someone to your cause, but you send a card to your cause pile, yeah, that makes the, it go up, right? Right. So your cause goes from zero to one when you dedicate a card, and you can dedicate once per turn. But sometimes it seems like it, it either didn't go up, or when you when you actually cast something from your hand, it didn't deduct from that. So I was trying, kind of confused. There on is how that no works. deduction. There is no deduction. So uh, let's say I dedicate a card on turn one. My cause is now at one. On my second mm -hmm. turn, I dedicate a second card there, and my cause is now two. Right. That is not a resource. It is, and the way I explained it in the first look is don't think of this as a resource. Think of it as the cap. This means I can play cards from my hand that cost two or below, period. Oh, That's okay, it. okay. And the number of, number of cards I can play is determined by my plays, which is typically two cards per turn, but you might play a card that gives you an extra play this turn. So right. it doesn't okay. matter. If, if my cause is at five, and I still have two plays this turn, I can run out a five cost card and a four cost card or a five and a five or a five and a one or a, or a three and a four. As long as each card costs equal to or less than my current cause, they are eligible to be played. It's not a resource that you spend. Okay, that's, that's there's actually a number of things in this that make me think of Full Metal Alchemist of all games, <laughs> uh, which we had a mechanic like that too, and it could be a little uh, iffy at times to say the least. So it'll be interesting to see how they can balance that stuff out to yeah. make sure that it's not, uh, not that is kind of my long-term concern with it. I very much. Oh, after that disconnect, that was not pleasant. Guardian. Oh yeah. <laughs> that sucked. If you watch the first look, you'll know what I'm talking about. That felt awful. Q, what'd you think? I mean, I'm obviously not going to play it, <laughs> but I did, <laughs> I did find the cause mechanic to be interesting. Like I, I thought, that that was it was neat from you know a just a technical perspective or whatever but i mean it is another card game so it's it's not that i hate card games i do not hate card games it's just i i just generally don't do competitive kind oh, of stuff hate. right stuff you right hate with all your soul stuff right. no i really don't like on on a general level i like the concept of them but the fact that you know sooner or later you have to play against uh, play against somebody else is where i just check out <laughs> you're done. So, you don't like i'm just the PvP, PvP. it's weird i like pvp and mmos but i think it's i i do not like like actually feeling competitive it's uh i have a really nasty angry streak and i just uh. get 
super like it, it like like clouding your entire sense of being a real person. So that's and, why uh, you were turning green. Before. He was toxic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I and, and so I just I just don't I avoid things that you, you know. Should play Rocket League. It's very wholesome. It's very wholesome. Right, right. No, right. no, no. So no, fucking no. Toxic. <laughs> League of Legends. So toxic. All right, let's slide over to the weekly bombs. I'll go first since we've kind of already alluded to mine. Uh, I got to give an A bomb to the way PSO2 and uh, New Genesis was and is being handled. It, it does. While I can understand that you know, maybe it's m good marketing from what Q was pointing out, get some people that, as a PSO2 fan who was like really looking forward to it, just to basically have all the content crammed on me within a year, and then the game for all intents and purposes retired, not not dead, just retired. Uh, I, I just it, it, that leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Not that I'm not gonna play New Genesis, and I do seem to enjoy it so far, and maybe I'll jump into PSO2 a little bit, but I don't like the whole it came out and then a year later it has a replacement. Uh, I don't know. I kind of feel a little manipulated on that one. A little manipulated on that one. So a bomb to that, but double bomb to the freaking games. I absolutely love them. Go ahead, Jason. I'm going to give an A-bomb to the big Overwatch 2 reveal from yesterday. Not because I have an issue with any of the content of it, actually, because so I don't I don't mind the whole, you know, taking away a tank and having five-player teams, although some some Overwatch League tank players are not happy for obvious reasons. Oh, good, you're, you're just going to be eliminated now. Uh, but no, it's, I give it an A-bomb because I'm just kind of dead inside, I think. Like, I'm not hyped for it the way you're I was just for just figuring this Overwatch. out? Shush. <laughs> Shush. Like, I'm not hyped for it the way I was hyped for the original Overwatch. I look at this, I'm like, it's nice. It looks good. I'll play it. Yeah. But, wow. I don't know. I just. Now, there is, yeah. the, there is all the PDX Con stuff coming up. We're going to have a new Crusader Kings 3 uh, expansion reveal later today. I'll get hyped for that. And Chivalry 2 is next month. Aren't you a Chivalry stuff. fan as well? No, I'm not. I, I played it a tiny bit, but that's, no. I'm not really that into it. Hugh, what you got? I'm actually going to give a dub bomb, and I'm giving it to Rocket Toys because I finally just got fed up still waiting for my boys to come from the Big Apple thing. It's August, apparently, when I'll receive them. So I went ahead and ordered them through them and got them, like, a couple of days there later. There they are. <laughs> Look at my boys! <laughs> yes, you took them out of the packaging. Now they're worthless. <laughs> but, but now I can try to make them hold hands. Terra Nova says, De bomb to the Final Fantasy XIV community, paying their respects in game to Kentaro Miura. Uh, was a great sight to see. Yeah, a yeah. creator of I, Berserk. I, we talked about that I, on Relic Grind last night. I just want to say, though, we need we need like a bell or something to, to ring when people don't highlight their bombs. It's like the bell of shame. <laughs> the bell of shame. So we need some sort of sound effect. You got the soundboard. You can use it. You can the bomb to Mass Effect for taking over my life and for PSO2 New Genesis for the very welcome movement and gunplay as well as surprise dropkick. Stojan says the bomb to GTA Online. Very excited for the new updates. From the viewers on YouTube, Gessley says the bomb to me, I guess. If the new free-to-play division leaks were true, then my predictions were closer than free-to-play cast members saying it was a BR. Well, one of the modes is yeah, clearly yeah, a Battle pretty. Royale. Uh, but yes, on the other mode, you were definitely closer, Old Glory. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, AD Hyde 69 says, A-bomb to allergies. Way to play through the misery, Wilfredo. Yeah, he was a trooper. He was a trooper last week with his James Earl Jones voice. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead, Q. Misfit Rain, the bomb to good clickbait titles. Seeing Troy plays Bless got me right in the video. Didn't Troy play Bless? Is that actually a clickbait title? Well, that's what I replied to the comment. I was like, clickbait? That is 100% factual. <laughs> 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 he does, in fact, but he did, in fact, play it. Nerdicus, which I absolutely love this name, by the way. It's like very, very Roman nerd. Nerdicus! Nerdicus! I played Bless Unleashed a total difference than Bless Online. I enjoyed it. All I have to say is to the devs is, fuck you. I spent money on the first one. That was buggy. Not saying any game that is dated in an old way of saying the game sucks, but not the game made you engage and have fun. Yes, graphics and gameplay might be dated, but does it make you happy? Go ahead, Jason. Now, speaking of games that they launched and then about a year later put out the replacement. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, to call 2399 is A-bomb to Mike. Why the hell do I have to find out from Mr. Harvey that you have a Final Fantasy XIV related podcast? We never talk about it. Not a good look, my man. Question of the week. I'm usually the last person to complain about microtransactions, but curses are the basics of the basics when it comes to general game functionality. You let them get away with selling those, they'll start charging you for the ability to remap your keys. Talking uh, about the Path of Exile thing. Yeah, obviously. so, yeah, I don't generally make a habit of mass cross-promoting uh, <laughs> my personal project on MMO Bomb. Those of you that know about Ready Check Radio, yes, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Does he follow you on Twitter? You that's what I. Well, that's I was going to say, that's you what I replied. follow Mike on Twitter. That's what I replied, and they don't use Twitter. So uh, uh, okay. I said, okay, well, fair enough then. That's why you didn't hear about it. Uh, question of the week last week. How do you feel about grinding your game selling cursors as microtransactions? Does it lead to worse items in the future, or is it totally fine for you since it's 100% optional anyway? Guess Lee chimes in. How do I feel? As long as someone else's cursor doesn't get on my screen and does not start to harass me and my cursor, I really don't care. I have 300 hours plus on POE, and I've bought a few stash tabs for quality of life for 10 to 15 euros. I do believe their pricing for cosmetics are ridiculously high, so I don't even bother. Understand why they would even try to sell something like that. Uh, if they would just give those as an anniversary gift or whatever, it would be great and everyone would be happy. I don't believe they'd get much money from them anyway, so I just don't get it. I just hope they won't start to sell in game fonts or texts or something like that. If they wanted to get extra money, just lower the prices for some of the older skins. Lowering the price probably will let more people buy them. 70 plus euros to fully equip your character with cosmetics is just ridiculous. So really doesn't care. Go ahead, Jason. Dr. Catalan says, I am on the slippery slope camp. Or you're on the slippery. That, that's a bad yep. camp. You're on the slope and you're going to yep. go down. So. Zing. Man. <laughs> go ahead, Q. Misfit Rain. Honestly, this is a problem for people. It's just a small way to support a great free-to-play game that does not that's not pay to win if you want it get it if you want to support the team buy it if you don't then don't this hurts no one by getting or not getting it i mean honestly as much as i have played path of exile i have not bought anything in it because everything in it is so expensive raise 0101 the whole cursor thing is kind of a non-starter in my opinion they're also going to be adding additional ones for free later that's the plan as of now people are just pissed because of other things or overall feeling a lack of understanding and delivering on quality of life features with the community justly and unjustly is griping for and being nitpicky due to the decrease in communication from the devs which is fueled by negativity on the subreddit and triggers an endless cycle finish it up jason uh it's more of ray i think oh yeah that's my, my, my bad my bad by the way you don't have to go to the store to claim the cursor you just click the micro application window which is separate from the store window and there's a field there to select the cursor it's available all for free the microtransaction cursors are just skins, nothing really new. I'm actually okay that this happens so long as they give more options to customize the UI as well. Are you okay if they sell them to you? Uh, hell, even having give, the option give to... Give more options. Yeah, give. Uh, as well as having the option to use previous UI skins that uh, had to would be a start. It would also solve the colorblind issue in certain things. Yeah, that's an issue that I did bring up on last week's show. And thank I thank them, by the way, Ray's, uh, for the small clarification that it's not exactly the store that you go into to, to claim the free one. It's kind of like ancillary to the store. So thank you for that uh, that feedback there. Question of the week this week. Should the original Fantasy Star Online 2 just close after new Genesis launches? Should it stay live for a little bit and then close? Should it just always stay live? And honestly, if you're going to play new Genesis, are you really going to play PSO2 at all? Or is it just going to be new Genesis from here on out for you? Let us know in the comments below. While you're there, make sure you give us your weekly bombs. Dub bomb for something good, A bomb for something bad in the world of gaming or just life in general. And make sure you hit that subscribe button and head on over to MMOBomb.com for all the latest news. Until next week, Q, where can everybody find you? Hang in on Twitter at Quitlin. Jason. On Twitter at Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter, and also occasionally streaming on this other cool channel, twitch.tv slash Ready Check Radio. That's R A I D E O. Ready Check Radio. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me right there, but more importantly, follow at MMO Bomb. 
on Twitter so we can tweet you with all the latest news articles, first look videos, free to play cast, and so much more. Until next week, gang, stay safe, and we'll see you on the server.